welcome to the Rock Church and World Outreach Center podcast. We hope that this message will strengthen and encourage you. Now here's a word from Pastor Jen Cobray. I don't know about you, but um, I'm ready for the word of the Lord. Let's try this side. I don't know about you, but I'm ready for the word of the Lord. All right, that's pretty good, huh? Let's try this side again now. I'll give you a second chance, you know. In fact, the whole subject's about opportunity. How to get into having opportunities, getting opportunities operating in your life. The great flow of op- endless opportunities that are out there for all of us. I'm giving you an opportunity now to shout down that side. So this side to that side... What was the question? What was the question? It was like, oh yeah, are you ready for the word of the Lord? That's the, oh, shut up, chaplain, sit down. <laughs> okay, I don't know, I didn't want to play tonight, is that okay? All right, so I'm gonna get down my knees because obviously I need big help. You know what I'm saying? But you know, bottom line, you need help too. Come on, you're a mess. I'm a mess, you're a mess. So we need God, amen? Amen. So I'm gonna get down on my knees. Father, we just come to you in the name of Jesus, giving you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. How good it is to be in the house of the Lord. We are grateful, Father, that we haven't, oh, thank God we haven't come to hear from a man. They're very bad. But thank God we've come to hear from the Holy Spirit, who is the teacher of the church. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Touch us, heal us, strengthen us, encourage us, guide us, guard us, direct us, and motivate us to be all that you would have us to be, all the Father desires us to be, all that the Son paid the price for us to be, and all that the Holy Spirit has empowered us to be. We want to be that. We want to be that. So therefore, Father, help us in Jesus' mighty name to get a hold of your word that it may become alive on the inside of our hearts and part of our life will give you the praise as we get blessed doing your word. Bless all the churches in the Inland Empire as well as around the planet that are preaching and hearing the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless our Baptist brothers, Lutherans, Methodists, Episcopalian, Charismatics, Pentecostals. Thank you for Calvary chapels and Harvest of Valley and Oasis, Inland Christian Center, the Assemblies of God, Four Square Denomination. Oh, how we thank you, Father, for Trinity and Emmanuel Baptist and Ecclesia Church and the way. And we thank you for San Bernardino Temple, Lord, and just bless them, God. We just bless them as they preach the gospel. Bless our Catholic brothers and sisters. They praise and honor you, Lord. Bless our Adventist brothers and sisters as they praise and honor you. And at no time, Lord, do we think of ourselves as better than them, but we see ourselves as co-laborers, workers together in one field. That's your field. Building one kingdom, not a man's, but yours. To the praise and glory of God, we all said, with a great big shout, amen. Amen. Tonight, we're going to have a great time in part number one. This week and next week, the endless flow of opportunities. A lot of people don't understand about opportunities. You know, a lot of people say, if I could just get in the right place, at the right time. Man, that guy was in the right place, you know, at the right time. And they just thought like somewhere out of the blue, this opportunity hit that guy. And maybe for some worldly secular person, it might be very true. But it does not operate that way with you and I. Can I just share this with you? If you do not know how godly operations work, you will only operate according to what you think is the way it is. And if you don't operate correctly, you will never get God on your side to do what you need him to do and operate in you. Listen to this. If you don't do something, God won't do anything. You've got to do something to get God to do something. What you sow, the Bible says, you don't reap, you do reap. Which means if you don't sow something, you don't put something in, you don't make an effort, nothing works. Simple thinking. If you don't make an effort in your marriage towards the ways of God, guess what? Your marriage is not going to make it. 
If you don't make the choices to do business God's way, you're never going to prosper the way God would have you to prosper. If, if you don't get in and work hard, you'll, you'll, you'll never get a paycheck at the end of the week. Somewhere along the line, you and I have got to make a decision that we're going to do things the way God would have us to do things. And opportunity is a funny word. We all like opportunity. We all want to be at the right place at the right time. But could I ask you something? Is there a better place than you being guided by God? Stop thinking about it. The Bible says the steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord. Wait a minute. That means where I go and what I do, God's gone out before me and he is guiding me. He'll take me to where I need to be. Whatever that opportunity is, therefore, if he's taken me there, I don't have to look for opportunities. Opportunities are, as a Christian, looking for me. And a lot of people that are Christians don't understand that. We're out there wanting, you know, have you ever had anybody come along and make a statement to you, you know, this is a life, once in a lifetime opportunity. Oh God, I just want that once in a lifetime opportunity. Can I tell you something? Stop looking for opportunities and listen to this and let God bring you the opportunities. They're looking for you. And if you get in and do the right thing as far as opportunities, then you'll find yourself in the place of getting those open doors that you need to have and closed doors that you need to have in order to prosper in every area of your life. And that's what this is really all about, is prospering in every area of your life. As a pastor for, you know, how many decades, I don't even remember anymore. But as a pastor, can I just say this to you? My job is to get you into the Word of God. Why? So that when you live your life by the Word of God, not by man's opinion, but by the Word of God, you get amazingly blessed. If you don't live by the Word of God, you're out there in left field hoping you're going to get blessed and probably never going to get blessed. So my job is to get you so you make decisions in your life based on what the Word says about your marriage, your children, your finances, your dreams, vision, destiny, your business, whatever it might be, based on what the Word of God has to say. When you do that, now you become a mature Christian, and God can trust you with these opportunities he wants to give you. We're always waiting for opportunities to come to us when, in fact, God wants to bring them on a regular basis. Instead of us always looking for an opportunity, why not look to God, and God will bring the opportunity. Is anybody listening tonight? And there's a constant, if you will, endless flow of opportunities available to Christians. We just don't recognize them. And we're not trained to understand there are opportunities that the world will offer you which will destroy you. And, there are oppor and we work really hard for those because they're really natural. And there are opportunities that God will give you that don't seem so much fun, but they will bless you. In the long run, that's where you get real wealth. And I'm not talking about money in your pocket. I'm talking about happiness and peace and joy. I'm talking about love between husband and wife and children grown in the ways of the Lord. Nothing better. That's real wealth. That you know that you know that you know that you're in tune with God. So in order to catch this endless flow, there are some things that we need to see. And I want you to catch it. I want you to get a hold of the endless flow of opportunities that God has available for all of us. Now, let me just go back just for a moment and rehearse what I just said. If you don't do something, God will do nothing. Are you following me? So many times we say, oh God, give this to me. Oh God, bless me. Oh God, make it work. And it doesn't ever happen. And we wonder why. Is there no God? Does he really care? Does he really love us? We've got to put it in first. In fact, the Bible makes very clear that you draw near to God first, and then God will draw near to you. First step is yours towards God, then his towards you. But you've got to do your part first. Is anybody listening? Very important for us. To catch the endless flow. Number one, godly opportunities will always be resisted. you got to get it in, in your mind that nothing God's going to do to bless you isn't going to be resisted. 
If the devil can't stop you, he can try to mess you up. He'll try to frustrate you. He'll try to get you to quit before the answer is ever there. And you will always find that godly opportunities will always be resisted. And sometimes we misunderstand resistance. We think if it's so resisted, it must not be God. Maybe it's God trying to speak to us. When in fact the natural course of God's opportunity will always be resisted by some principle that will try to stop you from accomplishing what it is that God has set before you. So that you never, what, take the opportunity. Why? Because when you don't take the opportunity, you miss it. Have you ever said, man, I wish I took that opportunity. And one thing about opportunities, you'll have it before. If you don't do something about it, you'll get nothing. Is that not true? Let me say it again. Opportunities, you have it before you, but if you don't do something about it, you'll have nothing. Did you get that? Yes. See, uh, opportunities, you'll have it before you, but if you don't do something about it, you'll have nothing. And so therefore, because of resistance, a lot of people do nothing and get nothing. And it's so sad when, in fact, there's something that you and I need to understand, the very principle of resistance. The Bible makes it very clear that, that the devil will resist you at every, at, every, at every turn of the road that he's going to rise up against you and try to stop you. But then it comes along and says, resist him, and he'll flee. And that's something you and I need to talk about from time to time, is the resistance of this. Godly opportunities will always be resisted. In fact, 1 Corinthians 16, chapter, let's take a look at it together. Paul writes, and as he's writing to the Corinthian church, He's talking about Macedonia. He's talking about his trips. He's talking about people joining him on his trips. And he makes a statement about his trips and his travel. And, and, you know, Paul was traveling everywhere doing all kinds of miraculous and wonderful things. He had some really tremendous doors close on him, and he had tremendous doors open on him. He makes this statement, and it's an interesting statement. 1 Corinthians 16, chapter, verse number 9. We're talking about resistance. And if you're going to look for the opportunities of God that are going to bless your future, you have got to understand that there will be resistance. Are you following me? In verse number nine, it says, For a great and effective door has opened to me. In other words, I have got this great opportunity. And he makes this statement, and there are many. What's that next word? adversaries. In other words, for you and I, you're going to have a great door of opportunity open for you, and there's going to be a lot of pressure coming against you. Understand that's the natural process. If the devil doesn't stop you, if something doesn't rise up and stop you, you will accomplish what it is that God has set before you. Then you'll get blessed. And, and can I say this to you? Then you're going to be a witness. Then you're going to tell people. And then people are going to use you as an example. And listen, if he can't stop you, at least he can slow you down by putting resistance in your path. And you misunderstanding, there's resistance. There is no resistance that will ever come against you that isn't common to man. The Bible also tells us in 1 Corinthians. In other words, what you're experiencing, everybody from time to time is experiencing. We go through the valley of the shadow of death. We don't park in it. We go through the valley of the shadow of death. We don't stay in it and camp. We go through. We don't sit there and make a way and say, I'm going to live here in the valley of shadow of death. There's misery. We go through. How we get through is God takes us through. Now, the word that we need to understand, and there's a great responsive word that we use in order to understand this better, is the word no fear. If I'm going to have resistance against opportunity, then my response has got to be I live without fear because fear will stop me from taking the opportunity because of the resistance. I don't know if you got that or not, but let's say it again. Fear will stop you from taking the opportunity because of the resistance. Are you following me? In other words, you're resisted, 
You don't understand the resistance. You're starting to question yourself. You're starting to say, wait a minute, is this really God? If it's really not, if it's really God, why am I experiencing such resistance? Uh, How do I know it's God? You start doubting your faith. It says he that's a double-minded man, don't think for a moment that he's going to get anything. All he has to do is get you waving on your thought process and you find yourself uh, literally falling to resistance. But in order to get you to the place where you understand whether it is God or whether it is an adversary, you're going to have to approach the uh, opportunity with no fear on the inside of you. No fear means you don't fear it. Someone, if you remember from a couple of weeks ago when I ministered, the one thing that the widows had in common is they had something called had nothing to lose. Remember the Old Testament, New Testament widows that were used as examples. Why in the world would God use those examples of people that God could use a miracle for, give them opportunity, and they followed up because they had nothing to lose? How could they give away their last portion of food? Because they had nothing to lose. Well, listen to this. Remember I told you the antidote for fear and, and failure is that you have an attitude of no fear. You don't have anything to fear. Isn't it not true that the word of God says that God will make it possible, all things are possible to him that believe? Is it not the word of God that God takes the, those things and causes them to work for the good of those that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose? Listen, what is there in the possible can you lose that God can't give back to you in a greater measure? Have you ever lost something and after you've lost it, you realize the outcome was better than before when you lost it? and you thank God you lost it because you got something better? Did you know? Listen, even in my own life, I remember as a young preacher preaching in Los Angeles, couldn't get anybody to come to church. If I didn't go through that experience, which was horrible, preaching week after week to empty chairs, God made me preach to literally empty chairs. I would never have been able to fall in love with you. This church would not be 24,000 members. This church would not be doing what it's doing if we didn't go through the miserable times to get us to the good times. In other words, listen, if everything belongs to God, and is it not true that you gave everything to God when you got saved? It's all his. You can't hold something back. He has your money. He has your heart. He has your life. He has your identity. He has everything. Everything you'll ever be, everything you'll ever say, everything you'll ever do, every place you'll ever go, everything you'll ever speak, it all belongs to him. What in the world have you got that you can lose? And if you are fearing something, it's because you're not really trusting God to give it back to you. So right there, get fear out of the picture. When an opportunity shows up, man, you've got to do what God tells you to do. Take a hold of the word of God. God, you haven't given me the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. God, I have the mind of Christ. I don't have the mind of a wimp. I don't have a mind that can't operate. Here's an opportunity for me to open doors. I don't know how I'm going to make it, but I know I'm going to make it because I got God on my side. Come on, somebody. See... What most people do that are Christians never use the eternal word of God to bat back to the devil the problems that they throw at you. You just sit and take it until you finally end up doing nothing. And doing nothing does what? Produces what? Nothing. Because what you sow, you reap. So if doing nothing produces nothing, and so therefore if fear comes along and stifles you, Guess what it means? It means that you are literally at that place where you're finding yourself with an opportunity that you're facing, and guess what you're doing with that opportunity? You're finding this resistance is keeping you from the things of God. Now listen to this. Jesus Christ speaks in Revelation, the third chapter. I want you to go there with me. Last book in the Bible, Jesus Christ speaking. In Revelation, third chapter. And I want to read to you about Opportunity. There's a church. He writes to the seven churches. You know, you remember the seven churches. All of the seven churches he rebukes except one. You know, the one church that he doesn't rebuke is Philadelphia, and he does, he loves them, and he makes a statement to them that is a mighty 
statement. The statement that he says to this church at Philadelphia in the third chapter is the statement he ought to be speaking over your life and over my life. Let's take a look at it. Pop it up. Verse number seven says it like this. And the angel of the church of Philadelphia, write these things, says to he, notice a capital H in the word he, who is holy, speaking of Jesus. He who is true and he who has the key of David. He who opens and no man shuts and shuts and no man opens. Can I ask you a question? Is that not a description of phenomenal opportunity? Now think about it just for a moment. God opens and no man can shut it. God shuts it and no man can open it. Now I don't know if you knew this or not, but we're talking about no fear. We're talking about that resistance that will always be there that keep us from taking those opportunities that God has set before us day in and day out, becoming what God would have us to become. Now stop and think about it. God is saying that he has the ability to open the doors and he has the ability to close the doors. How many realize, and I've said this a thousand times, open doors feel really good. Wow, man, really good. Closed doors don't feel very good. It's like door is shut. When God's in control of your life, hello, now that's a big question, isn't it? When God is in control of your life, he has the ability to open that feels so good, but closes also what needs to be closed even though they don't feel good. Not every open door is a good door to be opened. You need the right ones open and the right ones close. Therefore, fear no longer comes in. Will there be resistance? Yes, but let's go to verse number eight. I like verse number eight. I know your work. See, I have set before you a what kind of door? Open door. Is that not opportunity? An open door. Let me tell you something about God's opportunity. When you go through God's opportunity, whew, you get blessed. There's a lot of worldly opportunity out there, and we work real hard for it. We study for it. We get degrees for it. We need those opportunities. We need those things. And I'm not saying they're bad. I'm just saying there's a difference between worldly opportunities and God's opportunities. And he makes this statement. He's, I've set before you an open door. And listen to this. And no one can shut it. For you have, I, I like this verse. For you have a little what? You have a little what? Wait a minute. You have a little what? He's not asking a lot from you and I. He's not saying, man, you are tough, man. You are the rock. You are really into it. You are muscle bound and you, you know, you can kick the slaps out of the devil. In fact, he acknowledges you don't have much going for you at all. Now that fits all of us, amen? And he says, you have little strength and have kept my word. Doesn't take a lot to keep the word. And he says, and have not Listen to this, denied my name. You know, a lot of times people say, well, I don't ever deny the name of God, but you don't do what he says, you're denying the name of God. Without actually opening your mouth and saying it with your life, it speaks louder than your mouth. Is anybody listening? So what we find out here is that every opportunity that comes your way will be resisted. But you don't have to fear that because God's the one who opens doors that no man can open and close doors no man can close. And God has said, I have opened the door that is set before you. And yes, I realize you don't have a lot of strength, but guess what? As long as you stay in my word and hang in there with me, I'll do something great for you. Man, that's opportunity. <laughs> is anybody listening? We're talking about to catch the endless flow that is of opportunity. Here's number two. Because I don't know about you. Gosh, man, I, I need opportunity. I need opportunities every day. And I, I'm not waiting for the lotto. 
Some of you ought to be tithing instead of giving your money to the local uh, 7-Eleven store hoping to hit the... And can you believe that you even prayed before you, you God, I'll give 10% of the $350 million. Well, you know what I say about that? You better give that 10%. No, I'm not. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. We're talking about to catch the endless flow, number two. Godly opportunities to be ready. One of the great opportunities God gives us to be ready. Uh I, I don't know if you know this or not. I can't tell you how many people come through a church and never stay in church. And they are in trouble. Let me tell you something about church. If there's anything church does, it not only teaches you the word of God, but did you know what it does every single week? It keeps you in ready mode. You say ready for what? Someday, hear me now. I'm gonna say it real Pentecostal in a moment, so watch this. (laughs) Someday, the eastern sky is going to split and Jesus is going to come. And you and I need to be ready at that moment. It's true. And I can't tell you how many people will go to church and you know darn well, they're so in there, they go to church, they love it, and then after a while, man, you never see them and they're, they're hardly there and they used to come on Wednesday nights and then they just got away with not having to come so they don't come and they heard a message before and they don't need to hear it again, they think, and whatever, and then they come on every now and then on Sunday and eventually they're not in church at all and that's the progress, but I'm here to tell you something. That ought not to be your progress. You ought to be ready all the time. You're on go. If the eastern sky splits tonight, man, we are ready to go. We don't have to wait. We are ready. We got our bags packed, which is our heart, and we're going on with God. And being ready is one of the most important things. So here's the response. How do I get ready? You're going to have to make a commitment. A commitment that's beyond your feelings. I tell you, let me give you an illustration. On the weekends, when you know, we preach all those, you know, this church has, I think, 11 services a week now. Is it 11 or 12? I think 11 services a week. And this 68-year-old man preaches all the services on weekends. Can I tell you something? Sunday afternoon, after all the services, one after another, after another, after another, Man, I'm tired. I mean, I, I, I don't care what anybody says. I'll admit it to you. I'm tired. Can I just say this to you? And I do not want to go to Sunday night service. I don't care who's preaching. I, I don't care if Pastor Deborah is, <laughs> is preaching. I don't want to go. My flesh doesn't want to go. But if you'll notice, I'm always here. You know why? Because I can. And commitment is, as long as I can, I will. And that's what this is all about. It's not what I feel like. It's not just this, I'm okay, comfortable. It's everything I can for the things of God in order for me to be ready. Now listen to this. During your life, God will ask you to be ready for whatever comes your way. Opportunities with God is being ready. Ready for the opportunity. And then when he sees you dealing with the little opportunities of life, the little church opportunities, the little commitment, then he'll give you more opportunities that open up everything else, including businesses and finances and everything else. But if you can't be faithful in the little, is anybody listening? In Matthew 25, it's a brilliant little verse that Jesus uses as an illustration, using Jesus as an example a lot tonight. Matthew 25, verse number one, I'll read it to you. When the kingdom of heaven shall be likened unto ten virgins, who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. 
Now five of them were wise, verse number two, and five were foolish. Truly, translation is the word stupid. People who are not ready are just people who are stupid. And I don't believe you are stupid. I believe you're the wise. Now let's see what it takes. Verse three. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom delayed, they all slumbered and slept. In other words, here's Jesus using this as an example. The example is, he didn't come when you think he's coming. He comes when you least expect it. You'd better be ready. And they all slumber and they all slept. And watch this. And at the midnight, a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out and meet him. Man, they're all grabbing. Jesus used this as an example. They're going to grab their vessels of oil, grab their lamps. They're going to run out and they're going to meet him. Watch this. Then all of the virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered and said, No, lest there not be enough for us. You go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. Verse number 10. And while they went out, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him and the, uh, to the wedding. And the door was Shut. Did you know to me that's the worst words in the world? The door was shut. If you're not ready and you allow something to get you off the opportunities of God, you have an opportunity to get into church. You have an opportunity to build your commitment. You have an opportunity to get a hold of the word of God. You have an opportunity to believe God. You have opportunities for great things. My goodness sakes alive, there's no excuse whatsoever because the king of glory, he is coming, and you and I have got to be unready. And those who were ready went with him to the wedding and though the door was shut, which is a freaky thing. Verse number, afterwards the virgin came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, assuredly I say unto you, do you not know? Watch therefore, for you not know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Here's my question. Did they go get oil and come back? Probably but the door was already shut. You got it now. You got to keep on going. You can't back off, get comfortable, say to yourself, you know why? Listen, this church doesn't need you. You need this church. Do you understand? This is a place where you come and get fed. This is a place where you always stay ready. This is a place where you're accountable. This is a place where you hear the word of God. This is a place where you get out of the world and you get into the presence of God in the faith of God. Can I tell you something? So when the eastern sky splits, man, you are ready. You got your lamps trimmed. You got oils in your vessel and you are ready. You're not out trying to find it. You're not out trying to drum it up. You're not out trying to get it. You are just ready. Why? Because you are committed to get into it. You can do it because you can. And that's called opportunity. And you're listening to me. Some of you are just staring at me. If you don't hear what I'm saying, you could be missed because you didn't keep the oil. You don't go backwards with God. You keep going forward all the time. And the ones that go backward, he says, aren't worthy. Are you following me? So where you're started shouldn't be the highlight of your Christian relationship. And that's where most people say, man, I remember when I first got saved. Well, stop it. You ought to be more fired up today than when you first got saved. Come on, somebody. And you, like Paul writes to Timothy, you've got to stir yourself up. Debbie and I stir ourselves up every day. We get together, we say, listen, this is the way it is. 
Come on, God's blessed us. Come on, get out of that. God's opened the doors. God's made a way. God's blessed us in every area. We've got a track record. Come on, stir yourself, stir yourself, stir yourself, stir yourself. Man, you're committed. Every day, making sure if this is the day, I'm going. You hear what I'm saying? I'm going just like Iron Man. <laughs> Without the suit. <laughs> oh, I get a little crazy, don't I? <sighs> you need to be crazy too. This is not a game. He's coming. And you better make sure you're ready. That means you don't go back and fall on what you used to be last week. You're a new person this day. And every day you stir yourself up. Come on, somebody. Oh, man. We're talking about to catch the endless flow. You're going to have resistance and you're going to have to be ready. Last one, I'm just going to say it like this. You've got to have uh, godly opportunities for service. God will give you opportunities to serve. The Bible says in Matthew 25, he says, and he will set the sheep at his right hands in verse number 33, but the goats on his left hands, and when the king will say to those on his right hand, notice this, goats are on his left. You know what goats are? Goats are people who just go around button things all the time. But, 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 that's a goat. Sheep or what? Who follow the master. And the ones on the right side, he's going to say something to. Listen to these words. He says, come and be blessed. My father inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food and I was thirsty and you gave me drink. And I was a stranger and you took me in and I was naked and you clothed me. And I was sick and you visited me and I was in prison and you came to me. And then the righteous, those are on the right side, because what happens? They took a hold of the opportunities of God, will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you and thirsty and give you drink? And when did you see you as a stranger and take you in and naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say unto you, inasmuch as you did it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. We have opportunity to take care of people. That's what this church is all about. This cannot be a church that just gathers, sings songs, and listens to the word of God without taking care of the poor and reaching out to the prisons and going under the bridges and getting them. They may not come to church, but man, we're going to them because God wants us to do it. And that's called opportunity. Now you can find any kind of church you want to. You can find every kind of church. You can have all the smoke, bells, and whistles blown in your face. You can have all the ecclesiastical robes. Do you like mine tonight? I wear mine right here. Not on the outside. And here's the deal. You can find anything you want to find. But when you find a church that will take care of the poor, now that's a church that's doing something that's pleasing to God. And we have an opportunity to do that. And you have an opportunity to do that. Talked about three types of opportunities you don't want to miss. Three things you need to know. Number one, the opportunities of God will be resisted. Take your time. Take a deep breath. Realize that God's going to speak to you. He'll open doors and close doors. Give him some time to open and close doors. God's not in any hurry. If someone comes to you and says, you got to make this decision tonight or you're not going to get the deal, then pass on the deal because God's not in a hurry. Many people say, oh, it might be God. I better take this. No, listen to me. Listen, opportunity God makes a way and opens doors and closes doors. Take your time. God's not in any hurry. Number two, you're going to find yourself in a place that you're going to have to have commitment because what you're going to find yourself doing is you're going to find yourself in a place uh, where you catch yourself uh, 
literally not being ready as you need to be ready. And the only way you can be ready is being committed to the things of God. This is not about how you feel. I realize that some of you come to church on Wednesday night and haven't had dinner. Thank God for you. You know what you're saying to God when you say, I give up my dinner to go to church? I'll eat afterwards, but God's first? Let me tell you something. You just caught the attention of God. That's what this is all about. It's that kind of a heart thing. Putting God first. Then thirdly, you're going to have to be unselfish. You're going to have to give of yourself for the service of God. Unselfish means this. Other people before yourself. And that's what Jesus tried to tell us all through the scripture. I'm finished. This is part number one. Part number two, we get into finances, we get into money, opportunity for business, all that kind of stuff. Next week, I'll explain to you what the word of God has to say. Will you come and let's talk. If God spoke to you today, come on, give him a great big praise. Hey, let's do this. Some of you aren't ready, you're going to die and go to hell. <laughs> That's you, and you know it. You are going to die and go to hell. You're going to lay in a grave, rot, and the worms are going to eat you, and something's going to come and get your spirit and take you to hell. Isn't that exciting? And there ain't no free ice cream. So here's the deal. You need to get ready by giving God all your heart and giving God all of your life to be born again. And God brought you here for a reason. You know darn well you need to get your act together and you need to get your life together because the eastern sky, you read it yourself, is going to split. Jesus come back, and no man knows the day of the hour. And when that happens, you can go out and do all the religious stuff you want to do. Go try to gather the oil. You aren't going to make it. The door will be shut, and that is going to be the freakiest experience of your existence. But here you are with an opportunity to give God all of your heart, give God all of your life. You just have to get out of the fear of it. Be prepared to make the commitment and get out of yourself and being selfish and give God all of your heart, give God all of your life. Now, there's over 20 of you in here. The Spirit of God just spoke to me. There's over 20 of you that need to get a hold of your coat, purse, sweater, Bible, a friend if you need a friend. Get out of your seat, come up here and we'll pray with you to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and stop messing with God. You say, well, if I do that, I'll be embarrassed. Uh-huh, you might be, get over it. Isn't it better to be embarrassed in a safe place like this than be in hell forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever? You, you know, you, you can't get out of hell. It's like not, okay, you've been here for six months, good behavior, you know, we'll let you out. That was the days when you were in San Bernardino. <laughs> Listen to them laugh. They know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Today is your day. Stop messing with God. Jesus says it like this. you got to be born again. Bottom line, born again means you've given God all of your heart. You've given God all of your life. Get out of the fear. Make the commitment and get out of your selfishness so that you can take a hold of this opportunity of getting right with God. There's over 20 of you. Now, I don't know if any of you will respond, but I did my job, and I'm going to stand here right now. Get your stuff. Check with your neighbor if you need to and say, come on, I'll go with you. Get out of your seat and come. Come on. No, no clapping, no clapping. What? what? Is this your first time in church? No clapping? We don't clap. You change to scare my fish away. Take you fishing with me up to the lake. We'll just have you jump around the shore and throw in bricks. Look at this. Let's see. Now there's 
19, 18, 17, 16 more of you. 16 more. Come on. Come on. You know you need to come. These are the first. So get out of your seat and come. You do not want to miss this opportunity. Fifteen. Fifteen more. Smart people up here in front. You know, you may not know this. I'm going to tell you something. Smart people are not determined by how many degrees you have. Intelligence in smart people is how deeply you follow God. Nothing to do with human degrees. These are smart people up here. There's 15 more of you. Fourteen. There's thirteen more of you. This is the Holy Spirit right now moving in this place. Not a man, just the Holy Spirit. Now there's twelve. Hmm. Now there's eleven. Right before your eyes, the Holy Spirit in this house. Now there's 10. Now there's nine. These are smart people. 10. There's nine left. From the family rooms, you're welcome to come too. From the foyer, you're welcome to come wherever you're at. Here's my, my word to you, stop messing with God. You don't wanna go where you're gonna end up. You need somebody to love you, respect you, and honor you enough to tell you the truth. You know it. I'm not messing with you. They honor you and respect you enough. Now there's eight of you that need to come. If you've never given God all of your heart and you've never given God all of your life, you know if you have, then stop messing with God and get up here and give him all of your heart and give him all of your life. That's what this is all about. What did I say? There's eight, eight more, eight more. I'll wait on you. Because you're important to God. Come on home. Seven of you. Don't miss this opportunity. You know who you are. You know where you're at. You know what you need to do. Six of you. Six. 
six of you left. It's time. Six of you. So many of you have said, I want to be in a place where the Holy Spirit moves. He's moving. If you don't do anything, he'll do nothing. Draw first close to him then he'll draw close to you. It's your step first. There's six of you. I'm going to shut this down and you're going to miss another opportunity. Another opportunity. Now there's five of you. There's four of you. There's three of you. Don't miss this opportunity. Don't miss this opportunity. There's two of you that need to come now. Two of you. giving God all of your heart, giving God all of your life. Two. Now there's one. Now there's two. Now, excuse me, there's two. Now there's none. But I said more than 20. You're a last chance for eternal life in this place tonight. You need to get up and you need to come right before your eyes. God brought 20 people just like he said. What more do you need? Do you need someone to fly around the room? foolishness. This is all about faith. Anybody else before you miss out? I should have stopped at 20. But oh, not when I know you're there. Oh no. A good pastor doesn't care what he looks like. Doesn't care if he looks like a fool. It's not about the pastor. It's about people's hearts. 
and I love you enough to fight for your soul right now. Will you come? Will you come? Will you come? Will you come? The most important part of tonight is what's happening right now. There's a battle going on for your soul. If you could see into the spirit realm, you'd see clashing angels right now fighting for your soul. My God, help them. Just get up and get over here. They're fighting for you. There's a war in the heavens over your life. Well, you made the call. All of you in front, thank God you have come. Now you can give the Lord a great big praise. You know that? Okay, now look, watch this. This guy's waving at you over here. Hi, what are you doing here? Why are you waving at these people? Oh my goodness, well get down there in line. You need to get saved. Now this is Pastor Joel, and he is a wonderful man. He's going to pray with you because you need to invite Jesus in your heart. He's going to give you some free stuff. Take it home, read about it, what to do next. Then he's going to invite you to be part of a program. Let us help you get strong in Jesus. Why? So you don't go back serving the devil, but you go on serving God. Is that okay? We're here for you. We want to help you. We don't want to just make this a one-time emotional experience. We want to make this a lifetime opportunity. Where are our SPTs? Where, where's our SPTs? Get up here, SPTs. Where have you, where have you been? And so these people behind you there, they'll tell you all about how wonderful they are. They're, they're wonderful people. They're going to be your best friends. Make a left turn, follow Pastor Joel right over that way. Come on, let's give the Lord a great big break. Thank you, Joel. Hey, you just heard that altar call. You just wanted to give God all of your heart and all of your life. Now let me lead you simply in a prayer of inviting Jesus Christ into your heart as your Lord and Savior. In fact, why don't you just go ahead and listen to me and go ahead and close your eyes and just repeat these words after me. I'll go slow, you repeat them. Say these words. Say, Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I believe that Jesus Christ is your only begotten Son and that you sent him for me and that he died for me on that cross at Calvary. I believe that his blood washes away my sins, that I am now a new creature in Christ Jesus. And I thank you, Lord. I receive you now and forever as my Lord and as my Savior. I'm going to turn from sin, and I'm going to turn with all of my heart and all of my life to you, Jesus, as my Lord and as my Savior. Let it be known in heaven, as well as upon the earth, that I am born again. I'm a child of God, that I'm saved, and I'm headed for heaven and denying my presence in hell. Thank you, Jesus. I'm alive forevermore. Love you so much. God bless you guys. Everybody just say amen and receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. So talk to you later. God bless you. Bye-bye.